Welcome. Today we're going to take a look at an Obsidian Vault setup specifically for students. I've done a bunch of coaching of students lately and they've all asked for this. Right? We've talked through it. I've kind of told them what I do. I've showed them a little bit, but they've asked for a specific vault setup so that they could see it. So we're going to walk through today for you and you can download it. It'll be a link below on GitHub if you want to just have a copy to go through. Before we do that, a few ways to support the channel. Number one, become a member, curtismichael.ca slash membership. Members also get all my courses. Number two, take a course, curtismichael.ca slash education. That's it. Let's dig into the vault. All right, I said we were going to dig into the vault, but there's actually one note first, and that is don't get fancy. I talk to, that's probably, you know, across any field, the biggest issue I see with people in their vaults and their setup is that they look for something fancy that they try to find like all the plugins and everything else and watch a million videos. And the truth is your job as a student is actually not to find the optimal note taking tool. Your job is to take the notes, learn and produce assignments. That's it. So don't find everything. Don't spend a ton of time. Don't like get a workflow that works and start producing with it. If you have a problem, write the problem down and then find a solution to it and keep moving forward. Don't spend all this time like subtly organizing things and like really it's it's not worth it for any field it's not worth it so let's dig in to our vault for real now so here's our vault and you can see it's got only a very few folders it's got an inbox classes uh it's got some subfolders for classes it's got assignments with an assignment demo in there notes tags and then attachments and templates so let's talk through them what each folder is going to be used for how you should be organizing it First off, your inbox. Your inbox is for anything uh, that you don't know where it goes to start. So I've already set uh, Obsidian in this vault to default any new note to your inbox. There are ways to override that with tools like Quick Capture, stuff like that, Kanban if you're using boards. But for now, every new note is going to go into your inbox because that's kind of where things start if you don't know where they go. Now, if you do know where they go, we can go to our classes folder as a demo. So what I have here is I'm a, you know, two demo classes, family counseling, and then the course code 201, psych 101. So this is in theory a first year course, but so put the course code, whatever it is, the name of the course, and then the course code is what is important. Put it in there. If you don't like the ordering, just again, this is why I have zero, right? Zero one zero. So I can actually put in zero, zero one and a bunch all the way up to 10. Right? That's why I have 10 gaps of 10 between them. Anyways, uh, if you want to have a special order here, add a number at the beginning. Don't overthink it. Now, if you come into counseling, you can see I have the first note is 000 syllabus. This is where you'd attach your syllabus. If you want to attach the PDF syllabus to go in there, right? If you're going to pull out any information out of that important stuff, then your syllabus would go attached here. Next up, all right? And I didn't actually for this one, but we should. This is our family. So we will hit enter and go family counseling 201. We're going to tag it with an actual tag in Obsidian. We will talk about why in a minute. So, and then our class notes. So say for June 10th, we have class notes, right? We take bullet point notes here as we go. Now in the middle of your class, if you find that say something in this class relates to something else, oh, it relates to this other research note I took, this other class, then if you can link it real quick, like you can type your double brackets, get the link immediately, great. If you can't, don't worry about it. Use two square brackets as a task, all right? I have too many spaces there should be one space as a task and then write as much as you can think of so you come back and link later that's it so write as much as you can think of so you can come back and link later when you're first taking your notes in your course that's not the only time you should be looking at your notes you should go back over it a couple days later once a week you should at least be going over your notes from the week and making more notes on it making more connections making more links that's when you'd clear out all these tasks and make more links to it you know link other ideas other notes uh say in your notes or other tags and your tags will come to the tags in a minute and what they all mean and how it all interacts. You need to be doing this for each course. If you're not, then you're not doing your primary function as a student of working your learning. As a rule of thumb, give yourself 30 seconds to make that extra link. If you can't make it in 30 seconds, move on. You're going to miss notes in the class. You're going to miss important class discussion. Stick with the class. That's your primary job while you're in class. Next up, assignments. So your assignments folder is for any assignment for a class, clearly. Um, I don't know that you necessarily need a folder here. Uh, at worst, I think you would use a, well, a new folder, a new folder, archived assignments, right? We might even name it as archived assignments. Rename assignments. This would be for any assignments that are last year. And that's it. 
and everything else is in your main one. If you really feel you need a folder for each class, fine, do it. But don't go any deeper than that. Don't get into like way more like, you know, figuring out your, your folders to like the nth degree, not worth it. In your assignment title. So you'd put in your title here, put any instructions, say out of the syllabus, you might link back to the syllabus or any notes you've taken on the syllabus if you want. Let's fix the spelling mistake here. There's no correction. So I think it's double L, there you go, syllabus. And you tag it here, all right? This is tagged as a Psych 101 assignment. That is important, we'll come to that later or why. Um, if you feel the need, and this could be actually useful, you could also tag it as assignment. This can help later in your filtering because you could say, I'm looking for resources from Psych 101, but not my assignments, right? That could be useful there for your assignments to tag them as an assignment, tag them as what they are, not, I wouldn't tag this with, um, uh, you know, a, a psych topic necessarily. I would tag this with the type of content it is. That's it. Notes. This is the title of your resource, right? If you're reading this resource specifically, a book or anything else for um, family counseling course, you do it for family counseling. If it is a book, I would probably tag it as book as well. Because again, if you, so going back to my counseling degree, I can regularly remember I read a resource and I can remember even what class it was for, if it was a book necessarily something. So, but I can't remember exactly what it was. I can't remember where, you know, in all of my stuff it was. So if I'm tagging it with class and I'm tagging it with the, you know, the type of resource, so a book, a paper, something like that, then I can at least do some filtering in my searches later with the, with the advanced search. I can look at it and say, hey, it was a book. It was for this course. I can start looking at that. And I can start filtering down the ideas down to a specific um, piece of information. That's important. So in here, I've put in a template, you know, and we can actually make this. So let's do this into a copy this and we'll add it as a new template for you. So new note, research resource template, enter. So the other thing we can do with it is add some YAML to the top. Okay, and then we might put in author, right, author link, so this would be the URL to it. Um, if you have like Zotero or Dev and Think and you want to link directly to the article that you have locally as well, you'd write um, probably local link works, right, to Zotero or anything else like that. And that's it. And then you might even put in here a task to tag for course. So then if I have a new note, right, I can come in here and say new note, this is a new resource, new resource, I can hit command P to invoke template, or I can say templates, insert template, or research template. There we go. Now I can come in here and say this is for what course? I'll say this is for psych 101. This is a research paper. So, and I could put in the author, the link to the web URL, if I can find it where I accessed it, and the local link. Now Zotero, Dev and Think will have some of these resources for you. It can be useful, I find, to have them right here in the note as you take your notes as well. So now as you take a note, what you're gonna do here is write your notes while you're reading right here at the bottom, bullet points, what you think is interesting, what you think, you know, if you see it links to other things, to other classes, go ahead, link it in here. And then at the end, when you're done, you summarize it. What are the important things in here? Summarize it in your own words based on your research down here. That's how you would do this. Finally, tags. So using tag notes, you can see I have a link in the vault for you to my entire tag note uh, video, so you can dive into that. So ultimately, the big thing about um, tag notes is that you can use aliases. So what is an alias? I'll do a quick, I've done a full video linked in here as well. So let's start by doing a template, and this is a, let's call it tag note template. And one of the big important things is the alias, alias, right, alias. So we'd come in here and so say, let's create a new tag here, new note, and I'll use one for mine, basic income. So basic income also, again, let's pull up our template template, insert template, tag note template, alias. So two spaces, basic income is also univ oh, uni spell it, universal basic 
income. It's also UBI. So those are both things that relate to it. So now if I was in a note, I can open a note, new resource, and I want to link it to basic income because I have basic income. I also relinks to, and this with that little arrow shows you universal basic income links to the same thing. So this means that I can normalize language between uh, writers, authors, anything like that. So that is something you're gonna have to do. You'll often find two authors, two writers are re using the same term for what you feel is the same idea. So they're using similar, sorry, different terms for the same idea. This is why you'd use aliases. I think they're superior, uh, tag notes are superior to just straight up tags. Cause you cannot take say, you know, I couldn't create a tag of right here. Oh yeah, that'll be a basic income. Right, and if I did this, I went universal basic income. They actually link to the same. So the pipe means everything after the pipe is how this should look. So that's it, just display. It's actually linking to the basic income note. You can see universal basic income. But if I go into a tag, if I was to say tag it as basic income, it would not allow me to have aliases. So universal basic income and basic income and UBI are all separate tags in Obsidian. Don't like that. I don't think it's as useful for your research. I think you should tag it as like, what is important research paper, psych 101, that's it. And then if I go to my tags, basic income, open up my backlinks, you can see, I can see that it links to this new resource. That is important. That's what we have for tags, why I think you should use them. You should watch the whole videos on those as well. Finally, attachments. So any attachment will go here. If you go into your settings, I open that with command comma on Mac. And this will work anywhere Obsidian will work. Um, I've already set here, so attachment folder path, and I set it to Z attachment. Z is only there, so it's at the end, or Z, if you like it like that. Um, it's only there, so it shows up at the end, that's it. That means any attachment you drag in here, PDF, JPEG, whatever, audio, is going to show up uh, in the attachments folder. That is the default place for it. Templates, you've already seen me use templates. So that goes to research template, right? The two templates I've put in there for you already, and we can set that. The only uh, external plugin I have that's not a specific, um, I was gonna say WordPress, but Obsidian plugin is this templater plugin, right? I set it to Z templates. I've also set the standard to Z templates. So I'm just going to search this template folder for our templates. I've already done a full video on templater as well. It will be linked in, and let's create this note now how to use this vault. And I am simply going to copy in all my notes from the blog post that goes with this and the video script, everything. See, all the notes are in here and this should have showed up in my inbox. So I'm gonna actually drag this to the top. And I want this out, I want this at the root level. There you go. So you can see it, how to use this vault. So I talk about all that in here and I talk about some plugins that I already have in here for you. So I haven't turned them on, but let's show you how some of them work at least. So Strange New World is one. And the best way to show this is in my own vault right here. So I'm going to actually open. So let's open up Universal Income right here. So this is the tag note. So you should also suggest your template here for you to your tag note template should get the tag note tag as well. This allows you to do, again, search filtering later, right? I've already created one here for you, basic income. This should get tag note. All right, back to this. So universal basic income. The fastest way for me to find this is actually to go to backlinks here and I'm going to grab, all right here, I didn't do the thing today. Strange New Worlds, I did a whole video on it. What it does for us really though is give us this little 12 right here. It lets me come over here and then I can actually see all the different notes that link to this. It takes a few seconds for it to show up because it's based on Obsidian indexing. I'm having some trouble with the iPad version of Obsidian right now. It's really slow. I'm actually wondering if it is the Strange New Worlds plugin. So I'll put that caveat in there, but I can see everything, right? This, this basic income has 12 other links to it. This Art of Thought has three other links to it, right? So in that case, part one at the start of the day, stages of creativity, time off. So this is a separate book. So this book has been linked to three different times. That's uh, interesting or good to know. That's why I actually keep track of books. Uh, we'll talk about book search in a second is so that I can see how, I, like, I can see if what multiple resources have linked to a third resource of what I haven't read, I should probably go read the primary source. 
Next up is graph analysis. So I can probably show you that right here. That's this plugin here, graph analysis. And this does a bunch of, there you go. You often have to click back and forth, a bunch of um, processing to figure out what other notes may be related to this note on hand. So a better one here is probably universal basic income. All right, so universal basic income. What else is in here? Universal income, generational wealth, an idea that goes with it for sure. I can see that, right? Um, There you go, generational wealth. So I can dive into generational wealth. I can look at that and say, what else is related here, right? Whether well, things have backlinks to it. So generational wealth in these different books. Interesting. This is why I would use graph the graph analysis. Book search. I've done a whole video on book search. It is linked in the how to use this vault note. What it lets me do really quickly though is do I have this book here? I got a book behind me, so let's look. Knowing what we know is what book I just purchased. So let me see if I have this in here. Knowing what we know, it's already in there. Okay, so what else could we add? Let's just add a, oh, let's pretend knowing what we know refers to some other book. So I'm gonna delete this later, but let's look for it. So we say some other book, nothing really matched because of course not. So what I would do, and I got a whole video recently on how to take book notes that is linked in the how to use this vault, the blog post that goes with this. So what I would do is I'd open this up, I'd hit command P, book search, create new book note, some other book, enter, and then the other book. Now I've created a note for this. I've set up book search to, at least in my vault, to open it into the proper folder that I want it for. Um, so for your student vault, if you want, let's just do that. If you really want in your notes to have like a book subfolder to categorize all your books there, fine. I would suggest you tag books with book as well, right? So you see tag book, I've used it uh, as a YAML front matter, but that means I can sort any book as well. So if you wanna create a folder in here for books, go for it, that's entirely up to you. If you don't feel you need that extra level of organization and the tag is fine, that also works for me, do whatever you want. And then I would come in here and I'd search for, what was this? the other book and I'd link to it, right? Now I know that this book and say it was on page 123. So then I'd know that this book was linked in knowing what we know and then I could actually go back and refer to it. I'm gonna delete this because I don't actually want that because that book doesn't do that. Delete file. Perfect, that's what I'd use that for. Other one is Readwise Official. So Readwise Official is a paid one. What Readwise Official does is it syncs your Kindle notes. If we come in here, I'm just gonna show you this in my, uh, my vault, because I actually have notes here, Readwise Official. I've set it up and so I've already initiated sync. I'm not gonna do that right now. I can customize my formatting options. I can sync automatically when Obsidian opens, which I have it set for and resync any deleted files as well. So what that does is if I opened up, uh, what have I done? Cal Newport. Deep work. So you can see Readwise Books Deep Work. I have two entries. This is Readwise's notes on it. This is when I actually took notes on the physical copy I own behind me. So I can open up Readwise and I can come in here and say author Cal Newport. Great. Uh, it shows me my highlights and location. I've seen other tools that don't show you the location, which is dumb. And then it shows me my notes as an indented view. This is one of my faults with Reflect app recently is it had two totally separate headings. It didn't show me my highlight and then my note on the highlight. It had it like two totally separate and no location. So I couldn't actually work them out together. Put that book back out of the way. And finally, you could use Templator, which I've already showed you. There's a lot to go into Templator um, for settings. I go Templator is down here. And there's a lot of stuff you can go into here, how it does your syntax highlighting, your automatic jump to cursor settings, template hotkeys. There's a whole bunch you can go into here and do like, show you, there's so much, so many settings in here, but for now, just start with the basic template stuff. Just start by set up your basic class note, how you want it, anything you want at the top, any tags you want, set those up for yourself and that's it. You don't need to do really much more than what I have for you here. Instead of setting up your, again, in your templates, I would set up a class note template. That is it. So for a student, if you're gonna have a vault, that's what you'd have. You can see I've actually installed, and let's come in here, go to community plugins. So when you get to a new Obsidian vault, it'll show up like this with community plugins. You gotta turn them on. It basically says, hey, these are code that we looked at, but we can't verify everything for. Trust them or don't. 
So I've turned on Templator for you. I have not turned on Book Search. I have not turned on Graph Analysis. I have not turned on Strange New Worlds. And I have not turned on Readwise Official. Readwise costs money. So it's up to you if you want to pay for it or not. I've done a whole video on Readwise as well, which is linked in the How to Use This Vault note if you want to use it. That one has an affiliate link for me, or you can just go to Readwise and pay for yourself, whatever you want. That's how we have a student set of videos. So remember, as a student, your big job is to take notes, to learn things, and then to produce your assignments out of them. It's not to spend hours optimizing your vault. That is busy work. That is not what your job is. It's much like with me creating YouTube videos. My job is my job is a little more in part to find like the optimal workflow and the optimal tool and test test everything out but ultimately my job is to produce a video not spend time fiddling with my vault so i spend less time fiddling with my vault than many people that i especially that i talk to the biggest issue i've seen even talking to a research scientist he said his core job was to take notes to think about his notes to connect his notes and then to write stuff down when i said how much time do you spend on your core job function to take notes research all that he was like oh, i don't know i fit it in when i can i do a lot of other stuff he's like so you're telling me you do not do your core job function and he said oh you're right i don't so I helped, one of the big things that helped him in this note making process was to set up his schedule properly so that he did do his core job function. As a student, your core job function is to read, to learn, to do all that other, to do that stuff. Not necessarily to go bowling with your friends. That's a good part of school. Um, but I, again, I, when I talk to a lot of students, they spend a lot of time doing all the fun stuff and they're like, but I'm not taking good notes. And when you talk to them, they're not revisiting their notes. They're only honestly taking okay notes in class and they're definitely not spending much time linking them. They're not going back to their notes often. So those are the big crucial things you should do. Get your vault set up. You got one here that you can download for free to test it out and then do the work. That's it. If you liked the video, thumbs up below, subscribe, YouTube nonsense. The best way to support me as always, become a member, curtismichael.ca slash membership. Take a course, curtismichael.ca slash education. And then I also have a free newsletter, curtismichael.ca slash PKM dash weekly. If you want to get a weekly uh, newsletter on what I think was important in the PKM space, covering a few different tools and a few different topics. And there's usually an interesting read in there that I just thought was interesting, ranging from city design to whatever I thought was interesting. That's it. Have an awesome day.